One day can be pretty much like the next day. Weeks and months can slip by and not much seems to change other than the seasons and holidays on the calendar. But something is changing, little by little, almost unnoticed. Every little choice and decision that you and I make is adding a grain of sand to a bag that will either grow so heavy over time that it will restrict your free and easy movement, or the grain of sand is being added to a stabilizing ballast that helps keep you steady through the rough terrain and ruts of life. Every little choice we make, every word, Every action is not benign, but goes in one direction or the other, either towards health and love and goodness or dysfunction, coldness and evil. One rarely has the sense of the accumulation of such choices reflecting back over the day or even the month. But just as a seed slowly sprouts from the ground and only after much time bears its fruit, Though on any given day, growth is almost unnoticed, but change is occurring nonetheless, and eventually the season will be over and the fruit has arrived, ready to be picked. So it is with our lives. We are slowly becoming something. Every little decision, every slight preference, attitude, actions, they're all growing fruit that will eventually come to harvest. Author C.S. Lewis wrote, Every time you make a choice, you are turning the central part of you, the part of you that chooses, into something a little different from what it was before. And taking your life as a whole, with all of your innumerable choices, all your life long, you are slowly turning this central thing either into a heavenly creature or into a hellish creature either into a creature that is in harmony with God and with other creatures and with itself, or else into one that is in a state of war and hatred with God and with its fellow creatures and with itself. To be the one kind of creature is heaven. That is, it is joy, peace, knowledge, and power. To be the other means madness, horror, idiocy, rage, impotence, and eternal loneliness. Each of us at each moment is progressing to one state or the other. Now, when most people are presented with these two alternatives, most would choose to become something good rather than evil. But unfortunately, it's not that easy. During an average day, the choices before us are so small and insignificant that it doesn't feel like a choice between becoming a heavenly creature or a hellish one, as Lewis described. No, most days the choice is, well, do I continue another mindless hour of scrolling on social media or not? Do I harbor the hurt feelings that I have and let the sun go down on my anger rather than uh, be vulnerable with the other who has hurt my feelings and talk with them? Do I continue in the same routine, same job, same habits, same friendships, and not even consider what other callings or other people might need and benefit from my presence? The list goes on and on and is as long as the events of your day. It can be quite overwhelming to even think that you could manage every conversation every encounter with others and manage every thought and desire that entered your mind and so direct them towards the good and the healthy. And so this is the point of my time with you right now. Your soul has a shepherd, someone who is watching over every choice and that one is the good shepherd, Jesus. You have one who is directing everything and would turn every choice towards the good, towards love, and towards what is right. Jesus has sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in you, to pray for you and with you. Your good shepherd, Jesus, has given you a life in him and with him in which his word, 
directs and empowers you to turn from evil and believe the good news that you are in His care, in His kingdom, and in His forgiveness and life. The life of repentance is a life with Jesus, under His care, under His discipline, under His instruction, under His grace, under His protection from evil. Each day with Him, you are being shaped little by little into a very different person than the shape that our natural impulses and selfish desires would deform us into. The challenge before us each day is that we don't want the change of Jesus with the pain that comes with it, the loss, the discipline, the correction of Jesus. We, we perceive these uncomfortable and undesirable struggles as even evidence that God isn't with us since He isn't sparing us from hardship and giving us the good and comfortable easy life that we want. It can feel like He isn't answering our prayers and that He is absent or ambivalent toward our lives. Certainly for most, our days are not all pain, and God is merciful and often does give us relief when we ask in prayer. So what posture are we being called to take with the shepherding of Jesus? Well, first and foremost, we are called to faith, to trust Jesus that He is good and has our best in mind, and to believe that He is shaping and forming us into His image for love's sake, and to hallow the Father's name. From this God-given faith to then pray that you would be in step with the Spirit and abide or keep His word, and be thankful, for you are His beloved. You daily receive everything that you need for this life and all from His hand, for your shepherd knows your need and will supply. And when you have a lack, when your life is hard and sad, fearful, or any other challenge, then to cry out to Him who is in the storm with you, for the wind and waves still know His voice. Such a life of faith, obedience, thankfulness, and prayer, dependence on God, is part of the challenge that He will eventually bring to fruit as you reach the full measure of your life in Jesus. And on that day, all praise and glory and honor to Jesus the Good Shepherd will be given by you and all of creation. This is the life that you have with Jesus. Look forward to seeing you then this weekend in Bible study and in worship.